Well, hey, good morning. It is bright and early as I prep this bait for repaint. This is that Berkeley Juke. It's a 100. It is uh, probably the largest version of something that I would do. I wouldn't do, I certainly would not do anything any larger than this for the fish that we're going to be painting today. We're doing a flag fin shiner and it is part of the minnow family. And we're going to put the picture up because I've already pretty much prepped the bait for you guys. The only things that you guys need to know is that I've got some netting over some black primer. So we are going to get started. Let's make something cool. This should be a relatively easy build for you guys. Uh, Flagfin Shiner is part of the minnow family and there are tons of varieties of minnows. So we could probably spend maybe a whole year, could probably do a video a day on minnows, which might not be a bad idea, but over time, um, just on minnows and smaller forage fish. And I'm doing another small waters back to back with the first one because the next one we do is going to be a big build. It's going to be on a one of the Buca Bull family. Get that excess white off of there. I've got some opaque white loaded into the cup. And to this black primer, we're just going to go ahead and coat all of it. Now if you guys are playing along, you see the picture up in the corner, you'll see but this is a couple of different layers. So I'm starting with that black base. We're moving over white over the entire bait. There we go. Just get a good coat and we're gonna go ahead and heat set that. We are gonna heat set in between colors today. And this is pretty much, it, with the exception of a fin, I'm gonna do, a, I'm gonna do the fins. This is gonna be a freestyle paint. So it's a little bit darker on top when you look at it and it's got that black stripe in the middle so we're going to place that on after I finish doing a little bit of detailing up top um, and it's got a fairly light colored belly but the cool thing that represents it as the flag fin is the shape of the fins and it's also the coloring so we've got a little bit of yellow going on and a little bit of red so we're going to represent that on this pectoral fin that I'll put in and then I'm going to do just a little bit of yellow just a little bit of black or um, red on the tail so I have just a little bit of burnt sienna in the cup here I am going to darken the back slightly. I don't want to go too dark on this back. The only true darks that I'm going to want on here are going to be the netting representing the scales because there's going to be black when I pull this off and then the solid stripe which is a, like a pearl black and we're going to use pearl black for that. But I'm also going to be using probably fairly heavily this tinted, I've tinted it with just a little bit of that um, fluorescent purple just to shine it up, no pun intended. But I'm just going to take just a little bit and run down the back and it's very light. Just real subtle to where you can barely see that it's there. I'm trying to get this up a little bit so I can get on the nose of that. Make sure that this is even. Just, just like that. So, you, so that you can barely see that it's there. We want to keep this as light as possible. To that burnt sienna, I'm going to come back and accent just on the spine and the back and around the eyes in a detailed black magenta. I'm bring my pressure down and just hit these eyes. Do the same thing on the other side. And then just a couple of spots down here on the nose. And 
And there we go. Just a little stripe accent. On the lateral line stripe that we're going to be doing next, I am going to use a pearl black, but if you guys don't have pearl black, you can also use a transparent black and either a pearlized white just to add a little bit of shimmer into it, or if you do have something like this opaque pearlescent additive, you can throw that in as well. But I do have a Createx pearl black, it's 5315, and we're going to build that line at a low pressure and I'm going to leave this where it is and I'm going to work close and just come down from where the gill plate starts here and just work my way back. And always finish at the tail. Just pull that, and this is a this is actually a great practice fish for you guys to do when you're putting in freestyle lines. And just draw it back towards you, nice even strokes, and try and build the middle up a little bit darker so that you have a lighter edge on both sides. We'll flip that over and do the exact same thing. And one of the reasons, the other reason that I picked the jukes, probably just a little bit out of proportion, it's probably a little bit bigger than this fish will ever be, but it's got a phenomenal gill plate section that was molded into this bait. I really, really like that. So that's one of the other reasons that we're using this. And then just continually pull this straight down. And just build up a couple of strokes coming back. So that, that is what you're looking at. And like I said at the beginning of the video, heat setting between layers. I'm going to add just a little bit more to this side. I think we're a little bit thicker on one than the other. So I'm just going to build some light stuff. There we go. That's pretty even. Again, this is a relatively simple build, but it's a very effective one, especially if you guys are match the hatch folks. And I'm sure there's probably a couple of purists out there that are saying that might be too big. It might be, but it's a good representation. And the cool thing about the minnow family is that there are so many different minnows out there in the same family that look fairly similar. This being one of those. Now we can just pull up our scale netting. You'll see we've got a pretty clean bait. And we're going to add just a couple of things to this need to add our pectoral fin, a little bit of red, and then we're going to shoot some pearl over the, in the entire thing. Now there is just a little bit of scrape from one of these helping hand gator clips and we could probably, we'll see how it covers. Um, I might be able to just build on that but I also might be able to drop in just a little bit of red or some pearl white to that as well. That's not a huge oops. There's a one back here, but relatively easy to correct. I'm going to add just a little bit of pearlized white into the mix. Not saying that I'm mixing in the cup, it's just pearl white. But into the, into the fold as it were. I'm going to lightly shoot that over the entire bait just to kind of give it that shimmery appearance that you would see on the scaling of an actual fish. It's also going to tone down this little area up here. That should be good. So 
So I think what I'm going to do with this one little spot here is just come back with an artist brush. Only because it's kind of annoying me. It's not really a huge mistake, but I'm just going to take take a real thin. This is like a zero, I think. Yes, yeah, is not a double zero. But just to this area to correct it anywhere where the gator clips kind of snagged a little bit of the primer off. And then we're going to come back through with a pearl white again and kind of bury it. Just bury that real quick. Gave that one more quick heat set. Gonna put this back into the helping hands. And now we're gonna find a suitable pectoral fin. I'm hoping that the um, fin wheel from Russ is not gonna be too big for this bait. Hoping I can find a relatively small one in here. And it is a very triangular shaped fin, which is why they call it a flag fin, because it looks like a nautical shape. So I want to try and find something that's relatively small, but that represents probably this one. That might be a little too big. Maybe not. Maybe not. I think we can do that. So now I want to go ahead and just mark on this one what I'm going to be using. And I think I'm going to use just this white brush. to represent where, there we go, where that point, see there's a little point right there. And then we'll put it on the other side so that we can come back when we're ready for that fin. And we'll get them both in exactly the same place. here. There we go. And just mark it. So we'll just set that down. Kind of hold that too. And then very lightly come in and give just a little bit. Flip this over and do the same thing on the other side. We're building backwards. I normally try and go light to dark, which is what we're going to try and follow here. And then just the back edge. I'm now going to add just a little bit of like three drops of this bright red. It's on my finger. And we'll put our little fin wheel down here. Just barely on the edge. And before we add the edges to this fin, I want to give it a quick heat set. Black magenta. Two drops. Barely even need that. One drop might do. Super light. Light as we can get it. And then just come back in. Set that down again. I'm just going to do the top here. Come back and do the same thing on the other side. Make sure we wipe this down.
There you go. I'm going to come back with a small straight edge. I'm going to use this one right here because this is a fairly intricate gill plate. But just to get the exterior, and I'm still running about 8 PSI, and I just want to add a little bit of detailing in so that we can define this gill plate. go. We have just enough shading. And the cool thing about that, again, black magenta, which is why it's an all-purpose for me, is that it tints it red just enough, that the suggestion of having those gills underneath that plate. So we'll start from the top and work down on this side. This is probably the most intricate we'll get on this bait is in the shading. I'm going to work from the inside out. And hit this. And then on the bottom. And come back up. Now I did want to represent one more drop. Um, I always try and wipe that down when I'm done with it. And again, I'm using, what have we got here? A, Han a Hansi Yellow and a Comart, and they're bright red. Just something different. I did say that I was going to represent the back fin with just a little bit of red. Not much. On the tail end of this bait. We're not quite done. I am going to give it a little bit of red around the throat. Not much. Barely. Heat set. All right, let's figure some eyes out. Let me show you what we've got so far. Pretty clean bait. Very match the hatch. Just a little bit of red on the throat. This is a six millimeter eye. Give you guys some lighting here. So I'm gonna use, let's see. I think we can go with just the six. Let's see what John's got for us today. Could probably use a regular silverish with just a hint of yellow in it, but I wanna see what this thing looks like if I have the eyes to do it. I know that on the sixes I had asked for, actually that would be cool if we didn't use a pupil, but I'm gonna try and keep it as match the hatch as I can. Do I have, hmm, I may not. I might have to use, yeah, cause all I have are reptile eyes and I do want this would be my choice if I didn't use pupiled eyes. But yep, I um, think we'll just go with a plane because I do want to keep it match the hatch as much as possible on this. So unfortunately I have blown through all of the exotics and customs in six that had a actual pupil. So we're gonna go up to our silvers and just see what we have. do on something a little bit bigger if I had it. Let's see here. Do I have anything that's on the fancy side that's going to look natural? That would be ideal if I did, but I may not. 
this might be this is slightly bigger than a six we'll do these get a little bit of glue going on in here and we have the silver eyes on and here is our bait the flag fin shiner just a hint of red in the pectoral fins yellow I like it I'm gonna dip this I hope that I was able to show you guys a new pattern to put in your repertoire have a fantastic rest of your day folks and I'll see you on the next video cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates